Welcome, I'm David, I'm Lindsay, and, and this, this is Desmond's, Desmond's Donders. at Bambra Castle. We parked up a little way from it on a road called The Winding. And park up, we passed two on the way on this road, both bike barriers. The main park up has a horrendous reputation on TripAdvisor uh, and amongst motorhomes, camp vans. So we're here down the windings where we found an extra little spot. The park up is made up of two car size bays which you couldn't get a full size motorhome in but at the bottom of the park up, which I'm not going to film because there's other people about, there is one large bay and there are three motorhomes in here overnight. There's the beach, the castle. And the North Sea and the inner fire islands. And when a rook wants his picture taken what can you do but oblige? Close the look. Be in a farm.
there's Banborough Castle. Not quite sure how to get there yet. But for some reason there's a lot of touchers about looking out to sea. No idea why. Don't ask. So let's see if Lindsay can get to the castle without getting lost. I won't be taking bets because I'd lose my money. This is the courtyard and the main state rooms were allowed in, apparently. It's all very busy. Banborough Castle is situated on the northeast coast of England, by the village of Banborough in Northumberland. It is a Grade 1 listed building. The site was originally the location of a Celtic fort known as Dingari and may have been the capital of the Kingdom of Bernicia from its foundation in around 420 to 547. After passing between the Britons and the Anglo-Saxons three times, the fort came under Anglo-Saxon control in 590. The fort was destroyed by the Vikings in 993, and the Normans later built a new castle on the site, which forms the core of the present castle. After a revolt in 1095, supported by the castle's owner, it became the property of the English monarch. In the 17th century, financial difficulties led the castle to deteriorating, but it was restored by various owners during the 18th and 19th centuries, and it was finally bought by the Victorian era industrialist William Armstrong, who completed its restoration. The castle still belongs to the Armstrong family and is open to the public. During the civil wars at the end of King John's reign, the castle was under the control of Philip of Oldcoats. In 1464, during the Wars of the Roses, it became the first castle in England to be defeated by artillery. At the end of a nine-month siege by Richard Neville, 16th Earl of Warwick, the Kingmaker, 
on behalf of the Yorkists. Thank you for watching Desmond's Donners and remember please take nothing but memories and leave nothing but tracks. Please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and hopefully we'll see you next time.